Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here in the sunny side of Michigan. Yay, summer's here. And I just saw somebody posting something about cucumbers. My favorite food. So now I'm going to be hungry for the whole next hour. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> or who is that, Mandy? I don't have my glasses on. All right, so we have a great show for you today. I hope you had a relaxing weekend. Maybe you had good weather, although you say that it's cold as a cucumber over there. So <laughs> it's like 90 here. So we love quilting, right? But would you like some tips on how to do binding? We've got Wendy Chow with us today. You've met her before. She is amazing. And so pop in, say hi. We are live streaming on the Brother YouTube and Facebook channels. We can see all your comments and you'll have time to ask questions and everything else. So let's not make her wait any longer. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Hello, how are you? Everybody's saying hello. Did you have a nice weekend? Did, I was did. It, weather yep. was good? <laughs> weather was really lovely um we spent most of our time uh which we spent our time in the city so we're ba i'm based in new york city um and it was really lovely we got to hang out outside hang out with some friends and family throughout the weekend so it was it was really lovely yeah very very nice all right so i'm pretty excited about this because i am not a big quilter but i love quilting and using it for fabric and you always give the best tutorials because you're so easy to follow. So I'm dying to see how you do your bindings because that's the thing that always seems to trick me up. Yeah, well, so um, like Angela mentioned, we I'm gonna show you how to machine bind today. Um, and then also I'm going in the second part of today's tutorial, we are gonna show you how to do decorative stitches on your binding. So that really kind of transforms your project to you know, a whole different level. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of examples of how that decorative stitch binding looks like. So it's quite different oh. to uh, what you'd normally do if you did machine binding, which makes your project really unique um, and gives it a really cool touch uh, to it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so for those that aren't familiar with binding in quilting, so binding is the final step uh, in the quilt making process. Um, it's actually the, sort of this edge here, so this sort of brown edge here, that is the binding. So the binding, what it does is it uh, wraps around the quilt top, the back and the batting, which is a wadding, depending on where you are from, um, that warm part of the, the quilt. And what it does is it hides those raw edges and essentially provides strength and longevity to your quilt project. Um, so there are a few different ways uh, to, finish your quilt binding. Uh, you could do hand binding, you can do machine binding, or you could do the combination of the two. So some people actually uh, machine bind to the front of the, the, the quilt top or the front of the quilt, and then they fold the binding over and then they whip stitch it by hand. Um, but today I'm gonna show you how to machine bind, which is my favorite method of binding. Um, it's really quick. Um, sometimes I think, I think there was, there was one time where I discovered uh, machine binding was, I was in a hurry, I needed to get this project photographed and done. And it took me about half an hour versus I would have to sit hours whip stitching stuff. So uh, that's why I like to uh, machine bind. Um, but anyway, so if any point, uh, if you need to go back to um, any of the things that I'm gonna take you through today, or if anything didn't make sense, uh, I actually wrote two guest blog posts for the Brother Stitching Social blog. Um, so you could check out those links as well if uh, you missed anything. So and I will, yeah. Wendy, I'll be sure to drop those links into the chat. So on Facebook and YouTube, both of you, both places will be able to have links to these. It's on the Brother Sews site, both blogs. Uh, this is gonna be fun because yeah. I love hand stitching, but if it's faster, I'm more, I'm going to go for the machine. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like getting things done quick. I'm a speedy sewer, speedy quilter. So um, any quick ways in getting my project done, I'm all for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, awesome. I'll, be dem I'll be demonstrating the, um, today's, uh, tutorial on the brother BQ3100 machine, which is this one, I'm going to just slide it over to the camera. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, it is the uh, top of the line machine from the Quilt Club series. Um, yeah, so that is what's that. I am going to switch back over to 
the uh, top to my desk and I'll show you what tools you'll need as well for this uh, to finish off or to do your binding. So uh, what I've done here is prepared a couple of quilt sandwiches here. Uh, so uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not actually going to bind a whole quilt project. It's just a little longer. So this is just enough to give you an idea. Uh, you need a rotary cutter, uh, a pen, a uh, quilting ruler as well that would come in handy handy fabric scissors um i will show you a little reason why we would use the brother move it to your door feed which is very cool um, and then you need some pins as well as uh coordinating threads so right here i am using uh, 50 weight cotton thread. I like to use uh, two different color threads when I am binding. Um, so for this purpose, I'm using something like a bit bright to give it, you know, sort of a pop to or contrast to your project. So this one I use sort of like an olive green here. And then um, for the second thread, this is for the bobbin. I like to thread it uh, with something that sort of blends in better with the uh, back of the the quilt as well as the binding. So then that way you can hide, sort of hide your wonky stitches and whatnot. So that's what I did here with a lighter cream color thread here. So that's that. And also, of course, you need to have your prepared binding strips. Um, so what I've got here is uh, two inch wide strips. Um, usually quilt patterns or project quilt pro projects require you uh, two and a half inch binding strips. I like to keep mine nice and skinny. Um, and hopefully maybe I might be able to convert you into using two inch binding strips. I, I really like that. Um, and then you also want to use a uh, sort of scrappy uh, batting scrap so you can test out your decorative stitches. Um, yeah. So uh, first things first, I'm actually going to show you how to uh, join your binding strips together. And I will show you how to do it with one of my favorite features on the Brother BQ3100. So I'm going to quickly switch over, actually adjust my camera uh, so you can see my machine a little bit better. All right, while she adjusts, I'll pop in so you don't get seasick. You all know the routine. <laughs> and by the way, it's so nice to see all of you, all the friendly faces. The same people come back every week. Wendy, you have a lot of people here that are pretty excited about this. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm actually really excited to show the decorative stitch portion of this, uh, just because it's one of my, one of the things that I'm really obsessed with lately. And it just makes a really unique finish to it as well. All right, so I think I'm almost done. I Got see you. It's almost there. there. We're almost ready for you all. <laughs> just hang in there. Don't want you to get motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too early for that. Oh, not too bad, actually. Anyway, um, okay, let me just thread the machine first because that's pretty important. Um, so like I said, I'm going to thread it with um, a color thread on top. Actually, no, I am joining binding strips, so I would want to use something that I'll blend in with um, the binding strip fabric, actually. Um, so I'm going to see. Hey, Wendy, we just have a little bit of that, and I it just started okay. again, where it's like, I can hear you. It's like an echo, like a weird echo thing. Okay, I think I know what to do. I am going to mute my laptop and then unmute my camera on my phone because I think I'm probably talking too close to my phone right now um so give me one okay how does that sound is that good that sounds that sounds perfect wonderful okay so I'm going to quickly thread my machine and it's so easy to thread my machine because I can just press one button and it's threaded do that. What's going on? Okay. That's that button. Ta da! It's nicely threaded. So when you are putting your binding strips together, it's a little bit difficult to see here because we are using solid fabrics. So we want to put right sides together. So before I start, I'm going to mark with my fabric marker to make it easier for you guys to see. So I'm going to mark this as right side, right side. Okay. 
so right sides together and we're going to join it perpendicular to each other and then instead of actually marking a diagonal guideline here i'm going to turn on my so straight laser vision guide ta-da do you see that red line oh yeah so i love this function on my machine especially when it comes to machine binding so i'm going to put my needle where that uh the two joints are and then you want to reverse stitch at the beginning oh and you want to make sure that red line is matched up with that corner there where the um, fabric's been reverse stitch and make sure that as you're sewing that red line doesn't um, move out. How the phone? My thread has come undone. All right, that would be handy. So let me re-thread the machine. It's only because you're live, Wendy. We just wanted to watch you thread it again. I know. <laughs> Don't you just love that auto um, thread threader on the machine? Oh, uh, <laughs> you just want to see awesome. that again. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to start from the very top here, just in case. Right, I'm just going to pull this. All right, I'm going to do this again. So, yeah. lower the needle and then butt it up against that little, where the joints are. And then make sure that this line is lined up with that end that you want to meet. So, reverse stitch. Oops, what am I doing? Reverse stitch and sew away. And then if you want to, you could reverse it here and then cut and then lift the press foot up. And then if I fold this open, you've got the binding strip joined. Um, but we're not quite finished yet because we need to remove the, um, the excess fabric as well as create your quarter inch seam allowance. So you see that's right sides together. There you go. All right, so let me just quickly move this slightly and then I'll show you how to cut your quarter inch seam allowance. So hopefully you can kind of see that. Actually, I might get another cutting mat so you can have a better view of it. Here we go. That's probably a better view. All right. Oh, we can see that great, Wendy. Thanks. Wonderful. All right, so you get your rotary cutter, and then you got your ruler, and then you match a quarter inch away from that seam. Maybe I should have used a colored thread, but it's all right. You get the idea. So you remove that. And then you've got these little dog ears. So you go fold that over, and you could use a pair of fabrics and then just cut them. And I like to fold it this way. So I'm cutting both the dog ears at the same time. So you got your binding strip joint. And then of course, depending on the project that you, you, you're working on, um, you might need to join more than one of these binding strips. But for the purpose of this, I'm just joining two together just to demonstrate how binding strips uh, join together. Um, so once you've done that, I'm gonna grab my iron little wool pressing mat all right so i'm gonna press these seams open and the reason why you want to press them open is to reduce the seam bulk and then another reason why you um join the strips diagonally is so that you can um evenly distribute the seam bulk so now that we've done that we are going to fold the binding strip in half. So long edges together. Press that. And I'm gonna fold this a little bit. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna turn this off. And then I've folded the binding strip in half. So it looks like this. So you fold it in half lengthwise. 
and then you'd have like your raw edges and then you have a folded edge and you'll see the anatomy of this binding strip in a moment so that's that and now that we've joined the binding strips together oops oh, I'm moving my table <laughs> my table's on wheels <laughs> um, we are going to attach the binding on to your back of your quilt. So what I've done here is a little mini quilt sandwich. So quilt sandwich, when you talk about that in quilting, it's uh, three layers joined together. So it's your quilt top. So imagine this green stitching side is my quilt top, my quilt back, which is the slight color thread. And then you've got the batting which is that warm part of the quilt. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? Oh, we're all good. Nope, you just have comments saying that uh, a lot of great tips, a lot of great tips. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're now joining the binding strip onto your quilt sandwich. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna start from the wrong side of the quilt so like the back side of the quilt facing up sorry if you hear sirens it's the sound of new york city for you and then what you do is you line up the raw edge of the binding strip with the raw edge of the um quilt batting and then you want to kind of leave about a four to five inch tail i know that this is a little bit shorter here but if you have a bigger project, you're able to do that. Um, and then it, you may need to reduce your tail length um, if you're working on a smaller project. So if you're working on a uh, mug rug or a coaster, you might need to do it a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna do it right here. And I'm gonna change my needle position to a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's a quarter inch away from the right edge of the presser book. And one of the great features on this machine is that I can find that quarter inch seam allowance by a touch of a button. So I'm gonna move my needle position to that way. And I'm actually gonna change the color thread in this, um, this part, just so that you make it easier to see what's going on. So please switch over. So another opportunity for you to see the automatic th uh, thread up. <laughs> I feel like that's almost like the the secondary theme of today's <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> All righty, so ta-da! How quick was that? I love it. All righty, so I'm gonna find my press of foot. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the press of foot. And remember, uh, you want to give. Sorry, I'm gonna move a bit further up. So you want to have a little bit of a tail at the end. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Again, you want to have a longer tail uh, if your project allows you to, but um, in this instance, um, I'm going to have a little shorter tail. We'll put the needle down and then start sewing and then reverse stitch. And you reverse stitch to provide additional enforcement. So I'm going to sew um, up to probably about a quarter inch from the quilt sandwich. All right, and then you're gonna reverse stitch. That's again for enforcement. And then you cut it with the presser foot up. And then I've sewed my first little bit and now we're gonna do the corner. So I'm gonna fold it this way. So you kind of create this 45 degree angle here and then fold it down so that the raw edge of the binding strip is lined up with the raw edge of the uh, the quilt sandwich. So let me just fold this again. So 45 degree angle, fold down to form your corner. So you've got your corner up there and then your raw edge is lined up with the quilt sandwich. Then you're gonna lower the presser foot down and then the needle down. And because we're starting at the very start again, you want a reverse stitch and then reverse stitch and then keep sewing all right and then remember we want to stop 
about a quarter inch from the V quilt sandwich. So I'm going to do that and then reverse stitch, cut, lift the presser cord up. And then so we've done this bit. Again, we're going to repeat and I'm going to repeat on each corner until we'll, um, we meet to the end of the uh, binding strip. So we fold, get that 45 degree angle and then fold down. And then you've got that raw edge of the binding lined up with the raw edge of the uh, quilt. Press the foot down. And then make sure that it's a quarter inch away from the raw edge. And then needle down and so reverse stitch and so all right so we're near the corner remember we'll stop around a quarter inch um, from the raw edge of this uh, quilt sandwich i'm just going to do one more stitch and reverse cut press the foot up we're on our third corner so fold 45 degree angle binding strip down and then press foot down and then needle down reverse stitch and, and now i'm going to slow down around the corner here reverse it cut press foot up all right, we're getting really close here and I'll show you in a moment what we do. Uh, but I'm gonna quickly form this corner here. So 45 degrees, fold down. And if you miss any of these steps, if you're joining right now, uh, you could check out the Brother Stitching Social blog post. It's called How to Machine Bind. And then reverse stitch and then so i'm near the end here of the start of the fault binding so i'm going to leave a bit of a tail here so i am actually going to cut off here and while that happens i'm going to readjust my uh camera so you have a better view of this next step all right so while she switches her camera I can see some of your questions rolling in. I did not stop her because it wasn't like right pertinent to that. But uh, hey, Wendy, just out of curiosity, how wide of strips did you cut? Were those two inches wide or three inches wide? Um, I cut two inches. Two inches. So most okay. quilt patterns or projects, they require two and a half. But I do two inches, just purely personal preference. Okay. Um, yeah. And so this is how it looks like with the two inch binding it's a lot more skinnier but again personal preference and one of the other reasons why i like to do the two inch binding is um do you say fabric okay so we reached to joining the binding strips together um so you could join the binding strips diagonally if you wanted to just like what we did at the beginning um, where we joint the binding strips diagonally. But usually by this point, I just want to get it over and done with. And this is kind of like a cheat way. <laughs> okay, so what we do is we need a ruler, you need a fabric pen and a rotary cutter, or you could have a pair of scissors for fabric. Um, so what we do is we lay the quilt back facing up towards you and then the binding strip the start of it laying flat and then this is the end of the binding strip so we've got all this excess here and we're going to try and to cut it and find that quarter inch seam allowance uh, so seam allowance <laughs> well, okay so what we do is you lay this on top the end of it on top so these two bindings the binding strips um, end up laying, laying on top of each, each other. And then you're gonna try and identify where the start of that um, binding strip is relative to the binding strip on top or the end of the binding string. 
last trip. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mark here so you can see where it is relative to the start. And then that's a, that my little marker. And I'm going to draw a quarter inch from that dot there. So this is going to be my quarter inch seam allowance when I join the binding strips together. Now, I feel pretty confident, so I'm going to use a pair of scissors and uh, cut there. If you feel that you can't really cut straight, just use the uh, rotary cutter and the ruler. All right, so I've cut that. So you can see there's like a little quarter inch overlap between the start and the end of the binding. Now I'm going to get my little pins and I'm going to fold this over and we're going to join this together and then we're going to sew a quarter inch here from that raw edge here to join them together. Sometimes it can get pretty fiddly, especially with a larger project. So I kind of like to fold the quilt sandwich or the quilt project in half and then pin it so that I'm not trying to fight the quilt sandwich while I'm trying to fold, oh, not fold, but pin the binding strips together. So I'm just going to pin this and then make sure when you are joining the binding strips that they're not twisted. So a good indicator um, that your binding strips are right sides together is the fold of the binding. So you do what we did at the beginning. So remember we folded the binding long long sides together. So you could use that fold there as an indicator. So that's like a groove that's pointing inward together. And then I'm just gonna pin these ends. Just put a couple of three. So it's just a lot more easier to pin these together because it can get pretty fiddly by just pinning the uh, batting or the uh, quilt project together. All right, so I'm going to bring this back to the sewing machine. So I'm going to readjust my camera. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'm just watching. You make this look so simple, Wendy. I would be pinning it, and I'd have to double check and triple check that I put those binding pieces together right because yeah. <laughs> it's such a tiny little sp space. I've done it before where I twisted it, which is why I'm sharing this tip with you. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from experience. All righty, I think we got it. Hang on, let me just quickly tighten it so it doesn't slip around. Wonderful. Oh, sorry, I already brought you back. I thought you were all set up, but it oh, looks good. <laughs> it's all good. We are good. So now that we've done that, uh, make sure that the needle position's a quarter inch uh away from the presser foot and then we're gonna sew ah, i'm gonna flip it this way and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam to join the binding strips together and i'm really sorry for those that uh don't like to sew with pins on i i'm one of those <laughs> so sorry to give you anxiety right now to those uh viewers and you want to reverse stitch here just for that additional enforcement. And just take your time here and then reverse stitch. Cut and then lift the presser foot up. And then you remove your pins. Oops, I better put my guy pins in the container. My husband always complains about finding pins on the ground. <laughs> all right so we we've, we've joined the binding strips together but before we continue sewing this part together or that final bit just make sure you press the seams open so you press it i'm just going to finger press um you could do it on the iron if you want to but i'm 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 lazy at this point <laughs> i just want to get my project done <laughs> okay so now that it's pressed we can continue sewing um, till the start of that binding or that stitch. So I'm gonna lower the press foot down. 
needle down, quarter inch away from the raw edge, and remember to reverse stitch here. All right, and then reverse stitch, and then cut. Press foot up, and ta-da. So we're halfway through machine binding now. So we're gonna fold the binding over, and do you see that as I'm folding it over, I'm covering the raw edges of the binding as well as the three layers of the quilt. And then remember that folded edge of the binding, it's here now. So I'm gonna fold it over. And when you are uh, machine binding at this point, um, you may want to start on a less obvious place because you're gonna to have to reverse stitch uh, at the beginning and at the end of the seam. So when I'm machine binding, you edge so along the folded edge of the binding. Hopefully I'll just move it a little closer you can kind of see. So you want to edge stitch here. So I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna lower my presser foot down. Oops. So I like to machine bind without pins, but you not pins, but clips. But you can use those sewing clips and clip the binding down. But again, at this point, I just really want to finish my project and I feel pretty confident. Um, you could also iron this down as well to make it easier for you. Um, but yeah, anyway, so what I normally do is I line the central um, mark here on the presser foot. I still have my um, sort of uh, needle position, so a quarter inch from the presser foot. Um, but again, it will vary from machine to machine. Um, so you can just play around it as you go. Um, but this is what I normally do. And so I reverse stitch to start. And then you just edge so. All right, so when you get to about here, you want to stop. I kind of went a little bit too far, but normally I like to give myself about two inches um, before this happens. So I'm gonna lift the presser foot briefly. And then you see that there's that 45 degree overhang. So I'm gonna fold that over to be perpendicular to the current edge that I'm sewing. So then you formulate your corner for the quilt binding. And I'm gonna lower the presser foot down in a moment and continue sewing. But I want the needle to end to where that, kind of like where that corner is where of the new um, binding edge. So I'm going to go there. Just take your time here. All right, so go one more stitch. I do another one. And then what I do is I press this circle button here. This is the enforcement button. And you can see the needle has gone down maybe three to five times. And that's kind of like it sort of ties off that corner. Um, if you don't have that function, you could just hit um, the reverse stitch once and then come back to that same position. And what you then do is lift the presser foot up, pivot, 90 degree angle. And then I'm just gonna fold this over and then just do the same thing. So we'll do this on four corners. So I'll just stitch. Okay, so it's about two inches from this corner. I'm gonna formulate this or fold this 45 degree overhang. Fold it over. Oops, I get this nice corner. It can get a little bit fiddly. So that's why maybe you want to use sewing clips or press, press it down in position with the uh, iron beforehand. All right, now I'm going to continue. Make sure that the needle catches the uh, this next side of the binding. And then I do the tie off stitch, lift the press foot up, rotate, press foot down, and then continue. Sewing. It might get a little bit, um, what's it called, a bit bulky around here uh, where I joined the binding strips. So just be warned about that bit, which explains why people um, join the binding strips diagonally. But like I said, I was lazy at this point. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to fold this over. 
for my new corner. And don't worry, you can trim off these um, seams at the end. And then tie that stitch. And then rotate, pivot, and then do the same thing. And again, if you miss any steps or details, it's in the blog post on how to machine bind on the Brother Stitching social blog. All right, we're nearly there. Very close, we did our last corner. And then we're just gonna edge this down. Okay, we're at the end. So remember, reverse stitch to secure in place. And then I've just machine binded this. And then on the back, I remember at the beginning, I told you to, um, fill it in the bobbin with a thread that's sort of like closer to the binding or with the back of the quilt. That way you can kind of sort of hide any of the like wonky lines. So that's how that you machine bind. That great, Wendy. I love it. Thank you. Okay, so we've done the first part of the tutorial so I'm going to show you how to machine bind with decorative stitches so I'm just going to bring off some samples so there are several decorative stitches in built in the brother BQ 3100 and these are just some of a few of my favorite decorative stitches um, and if you want more info on or the details on it um, they are on the brother stitching social um, blog post on how to machine bind with decorative stitches. Okay, so we're all moving on to the next part. My sort of secret when it comes to decorative stitches for binding is the Brother Move It Digital Dual Feed. Um, so what makes this product unique or this accessory is the conveyor belt like mechanism. So this has got constant contact with the fabric um, and it ensures that um, the stitches, uh, like the decorative stitches, the stitch lengths and how the stitches appear are just all nice and even. So I've got to quickly switch the foot over and I'll open my secret compartment and quickly change it. Whilst that's happening, do you guys have any questions? You have a lot of uh, fans up here watching, and I <laughs> love the ideas that you have. All righty, so I'm just going to tighten this, make sure that it doesn't come off while we're sewing. I love, Caroline says that uh, she always glue bases before stitching the binding down because she just can't sew straight. <laughs> Caroline, that's a great idea. Project. Okay, and make sure I'm just going to plug this in. All right, and then I'm going to choose a decorative stitch. Is there a particular decorative stitch that you guys would like me to demonstrate out of the three? Oh, throwing that out there, uh, leave a comment below if there's a special stitch that you want or do you? Oh, um, somebody at the beginning said they were using a blind hem stitch, oh. a blanket stitch which would look really cool on that. But I like the ones you have there. Those are fun. Yeah, that's just a little bit different. <laughs> All right, so we got wavy zigzag, and I think this is, oh, this is called the couching stitch on the uh, Brother Decorative Stitch uh, library. Loopy loop. Loopy <laughs> loop. Loop -loop. loop. Zena okay. wants stitch number three. Zena, that's pretty good. You know the stitch number. Um, or she's no, yeah, Zena. Oh my goodness, I can tell it's the beginning of the week because she's probably means number three from what you're holding up. <laughs> it's like, which one? <laughs> Zena, is it three starting from the top or from the bottom? <laughs> Wait, so which one is it now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, I don't know. It's Zena, <laughs> all right, we're gonna do the, the wavy one. All right. Okay. The loopy loop the way you want. Um, so that is stitch Q40. 
And let me just double check. So Q40. And if you want the details on the stitch width and length, it is on the blog post I've got. Um, so I'm going to adjust the stitch width of to five. I'm actually referring to the blog post right now as I'm saying because I kind of forgot. And then this, okay. So stitch width is 55. I was going to say 15. Clearly it's a beginning of the week. And then length is three. Oh, so what happens when you have a long weekend in the US? <laughs> All right. So now we have done that first half of quilt um, binding, machine binding. So we've attached the quilt binding on the back of the quilt. And then now we're going to flip the quilt binding onto the front. So you're going to hide those raw edges. And when you're starting with this part, um, so what I normally do is kind of like center it um, in this instance. So these red lines here, left and right, are kind of a good indicator um, or like way to match up where that binding strip is. So I'm gonna lower the press of foot. Needle down. And you know how when we um, reverse stitch uh, to begin the machine binding, like on a regular one like this, so how we did the reverse stitch here, um, we're not going to reverse stitch, but instead we're going to use this um, enforcement button here. So it's going to stitch three to five times on the same spot. So it's kind of like tying a knot, and then we're going to start sewing. So, and it may take a little bit of time when you are using a decorative stitch. So I forgot to mention that. So you can't go too speedy. And just take your time here. Maybe put on like I don't know, podcast or a, your favorite song in your ears while this is happening. All right, so we're gonna keep going. And then we wanna make sure that you fold that 45 degree overhang. So we're gonna keep going and we're gonna keep sewing to as close as possible to this edge and then tie off of it. I know this looks kind of a bit scary because my finger's gonna get pretty close to the needle. Uh, so don't freak out. Getting very close. All right, and I'm just gonna tie it off. And I'll, when I'm done with this bit, I'm gonna give you a closer look to it. Um, so I'm gonna cut this off, press the foot up. See that beautiful decorative stitch? And then I've sewn all the way to this corner here. All right, so we've done that. And then now we're gonna fold this up, so it's really similar to machine binding uh, the, without the decorative stitches. And then we're going to start the stitch right at this 45 degree corner here, or that fold there. All right, so you're gonna lower my press of foot. And then needle down, and I'm gonna use the enforcement stitch or function, sorry. And that's going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to quickly move this. You may need to lift the presser foot up a little bit to help guide the fabric. Or sometimes I like to put like a similar sort of thickness of the fabric to help kind of guide the remainder of this project. So I'm just gonna lift that, and then let's go. Ahead. Oops, not like liking that. I'm gonna make it a little bit. Here we go. We're back in business. So I'm gonna stop about here, and then kind of fold my corner here. So 45 degree overhang relative to the uh, new edge that's gonna come up. 
and keep sewing. Oh gosh, okay, it's getting very close. All right, I'm gonna move my finger. All right, and then I'm going to tie it off. I think my thread's going a bit funny. Okay, so that's how it kind of looks like in that corner. And then I'm just gonna fold it and re repeat the same bit. So we're gonna fold over. And it's okay with all these loose kind of ends. We're gonna trim it off at the very end. All right, so I'm gonna fold off. Oops. This is so a good corner. Good. Hey, Kay has a question for you, Wendy. Yeah. Kay wants to know, and you kind of showed it on here, but just to confirm, do you still have to pivot the corners or does it just continue on in the stitch? You just continued on, didn't you, and then flipped it? Yeah, I just continued on. So, for example, what I've done is I started the stitch here, so all the way to this corner, and then I used the enforcement stitch here to cut a tie knot, and then I fold this up. Oh, you know, and then I remove the project from the sewing machine, and then fold this, and then continue sewing. So I'll start from here and then use the enforcement stitch and continue sewing. And then until you get to this corner here, so it'll end up looking like this, and then um, use the reinforcement stitch. Hope that answers the question. Awesome, thank you. Cool. So I'll just do one more edge here, just to give you an idea. So remember, we are going to fold this over and that forms your little corner let me just quickly fold it again and then oops gets a little fiddly here which is again why some people use sewing clips here or they uh maybe use glue i noticed that that's not threaded yeah caroline i'm kind of liking your glue idea yeah it's really good oops, quickly, oops. You're welcome, Kay. And um, Gina, Jeannie, uh, what if your machine doesn't have the reinforcement stitch? That's a good question. You just do that like one back. <laughs> that is a good question. Um, you can do reverse stitch. Just keeping in mind that um, with the decorative stitches, it might clump up the stitches because you're having to go back again. So if you don't mind that, then that's okay. And you, that's kind of like what happened in this corner as well. So it's not like completely continued, if that makes sense. I mean, it also depends as well. Um, so like, for example, with this, I've kind of clumped that up a little bit. So if you don't mind that, then it's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to lower this down and then I'm going to use a reinforcement stitch here and then start sewing. Oh no, <gasps> my needle. Oh no. It's... All right, let me just turn it off. That's only going to happen my needle. when it's live. And I know everybody watching here is like, you know what? I think you guys do this on purpose to show you how to fix something. <laughs> so, Wendy, do you have another needle with you? Oh, you know what? I accidentally took your, here you go. Do you have another okay. needle? I have it in my secret compartment. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the secret compartment. Well, now, hey, guess what? This is a bonus. Not only did she get to see her thread it like three times, now you get to see how easy it is to change a needle, right? Yep. All right. So I'm going to carefully dispose of that. Don't forget to do that. And I think I'm gonna just use this one. Okay, I haven't broken a needle would. in a while. You guys are very lucky today. <laughs> All right, so make sure I've got it the right way. To be honest with you, I probably needed to change my needle anyway. That's usually when mine breaks. 
Yeah. I'm pretty terrible at changing my needles. I like to really take it as far as I can. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, I'm going to turn my machine back on. I'm just going to thread it. Oops. Okay, it's got that warning message to thread it from the start. You guys are very lucky today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just need to take a sip of coffee every time I thread the machine again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, uh, what am I up to now? Okay, I need to set the uh, decorative stitch again. Make sure I pick the right one. Actually, I might pick something a bit different so you can enjoy a different stitch. I'm gonna check out the details on that. And I'll put the blog post up one more time in the comments. Cool. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Eileen says your secret compartment looks like <laughs> a neat and organized. Hers Ooh. is a mess. I love that you can put the feet in there. That's like something I yeah. don't think a lot of people realize they can do. Look how good And that a looks. lot of bobbins. Really good when it comes to quilting. Do you want to play that chicken thread bobbin game? But yeah, no, it's great. And I like to use this pipe cleaner and then just pick up the little dust bunnies. Oh, another good tip. Yeah. I know some people put uh, snacks, which we talked about it in the last live that we did together. All right, I'm going to start this. Um, uh, the enforcement stitch. And I'm going to start sewing. Please don't break again. <laughs> Adjust it to make it easier. All right. So, this is actually my new favorite decorative stitch right now. It's the couching stitch. So, it is Q21, and the stitch width is 5, and the length is 1.4. And when I'm doing the decorative stitch, I like to centralize it so it's. Um, sort of centralized relative to these two uh, red guides that are going vertical. All right, so we're towards the end and we're at that corner. And then we go all the way to the very end. Keep going, one more. All right, and then I'm gonna use the uh, enforcement stick. Cut and then lift the presser board up. So I've done this little bit. How neat is that? And we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to fold this edge or this binding strip here. And then finish the end. So we're nearing the end of this. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Becky says, girls, you guys are crazy. The secret compartments for M&M's. <laughs> All right, I'm nearly there. It gets a bit fiddly because I started um, about here. So. You're welcome, Deborah. I'm going to get to this corner and then it's a little fiddly because like I said, it, I did the stitching there. Um, so that's kind of messing up with the fold. <laughs> and then I will do the reinforcement stitch, cut, and then, the press fold up, and then fold it over and so on. So, Everybody wants to see the there back you go. side. Sorry? Everyone wants to see the back side, Wendy. Oh, yeah. So the reason why I suggested using a thread that's closest to the, maybe the binding strip 
fabric or the back is so that you can kind of hide that. That looks that's, great that's though. On that side. Yeah, very cool. So it's a little bit different in comparison to just straight binding, uh, straight stitch binding. So this is the front of just the um, straight stitch machine binding. And then if you flip it over, again, I used a really light color thread just to blend in with the binding fabric and the back of the quilt or the project. Um, there you go. So you can kind of hide your mistakes. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, that's Johnson, it. She's going to make her pot holders much fancier. Ooh. <laughs> I like that, Don. I like that. All right. Do you have any questions for Wendy? Because this was a great project. I love it. Your machine looks great. Thank you for showing us how to thread it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and right, I showed you how to change your needles. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And change the needle. Yes. Everyone's saying thank you, thank you. Any last minute questions? I don't see any. I'll wait because I know there's like a 20 second delay just to make sure. I was trying to make sure that uh, I can still hear you, right, Wendy? Yeah. Okay, good. I know sometimes yeah. when I take that other camera out, if you're talking on that, you disappear and I didn't want uh, you to disappear. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Without a reinforcement button, somebody says drop the feed dogs and do a stitch. That's a good idea. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Thanks for teaching me that. <laughs> Everyone's saying what an awesome demonstration. You're welcome. And you did a great job with all the gremlins. That's what we call them. Oh, yeah. The live show gremlins. <laughs> they just want to be featured. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way i will put those links if you didn't see them in the comments we'll put them again let me just bring those up real quick for you i've got both of the blogs for you there's two of them where she had this so here let me just drop it into the comments so there should be two of these showing up and i'll put my name after it so you know that i posted this uh, and the both blog posts are up and you can see both of all these, the full tutorials, which is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Wendy, this was amazing. So, Thank by the you. way, before you go, I'm going to bring yeah. your website up because some people are asking where can they find you. If you've never seen her before, she's been on the Brother Show before. She's a Brother Brand Ambassador. And here is her website, the-weekendquilter.com. How's your book going? It's been good. I've actually got a third one coming wow yes and it's coming out in august actually i'll quickly show you a sneak peek of the cover and make it oh pages. yay we get the sneak peek over here at brother a third yes. book wendy i have to give you kudos on that i wrote one book and that was like it for me i i i named the squirrels that's why i have such a, a issue with all the squirrels we've become best friends forever i could <laughs> but your book is amazing your Thank last you. one so this is the second book that we were talking about um, so it's the Quilted Home Handbook, and that was released um, earlier this year. So it's all about creating quilted touches around your home. But here's a little preview of um, the third book. So these are actually samples from the printer. Um, it's called First Words with Cute Quilted Friends. So all the illustrations are done with foundation paper piecing, which is a, a quilting piecing technique. And I did all the illustrations. So here is a few of the illustrations from there, and it makes the perfect gift or like an addition to a baby quilt that you're probably planning on gifting to a friend or a family member. So these are oh my goodness, really, really look cute. How cute these are. Yeah. So I did all the illustrations on um, Procreate on my iPad, then transferred it to Illustrator and did all the paper templates for these images. So oh these my are gosh. just a few Ab pages from there. Absolutely love it. What a great idea yeah. to have both of those. That's a great idea, I love it. Yeah. Everyone's saying super cute. So stay yes. tuned because you'll be on next month. And then as we get closer to when your book launches, we'll have to definitely announce it so they can go to your website, and get a signed yeah, copy, I'm right. sure. All right, everyone, any other questions for her? Because this is pretty cool. Everyone's saying thank you.
can't wait. I know. Oh, she already pre-ordered the book. Oh, there thanks. you go, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> and I say a triple congratulations. If, if any of you know, if you've ever written a book, it is a lot of work. It, yes. I don't know what takes longer, the writing or going back to double check. I mean, it's a huge process. Oh. So kudos to you, Wendy. <laughs> It's a huge process. So for the first one's book, it was a little bit shorter just because it's just all the illustrations. So that um, probably took me about nine months. And then the big book or the book, bigger books, uh, at least 18 months. So, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Everybody's saying thank you. They are signing up on your website. So again, you can Thanks. see everything she did today on the blog. Brother, Go to brothersos.com. I also put both links there so you can't miss them. And when you go to Brother Blog, you could just type in Wendy and you'll see all of her quilting things and go to the YouTube channel and watch some of her past shows. Wendy, thank you so much for being here today. Brother, thank you for letting your ambassadors take over your page. In the meantime, if any of you are sewing or crafting something, don't forget, use hashtag Brother Sews, hashtag What's the other one? I just lost it. <laughs> Brother Scan and Cut. Oh my goodness, how can I forget that? <laughs> it's the beginning of the week. After a long it's, weekend. Yeah, we totally <laughs> long weekends are not that's not good. <laughs> All right. Oh. Thanks so much, Wendy. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you. Can't thanks. wait to see you again. All right. All right. See ya. Bye. And so for all of you watching, by the way, we do have, I have a live show tomorrow at Wednesday at 1.30. You're not going to want to miss it over on my page. And Thursday at noon, we're back here with Laura Pfeiffer with a super cool project for Father's Day. You're going to love it. It's um, wrapping up cords. Well, if you saw all of our cordy mess, Wendy, you'll love this project because you could make a quilted bag and then Ooh. take Laura's technique would be beautiful. So mm, see you all then. Tune in. I know. Until next time, everyone. Happy sewing. <laughs>